All right, in chapter three, we are going to focus on America expanding and growing. Now, there are a lot of other political parties that are going to develop during this time, like the Federalists, the Democratic Republicans, and the Whigs. And it's time of war. We'll have the Battle of 1812 with an attempt of the British to come back and control the newly acquired United States. But it's also a big time of expansion, and I want to focus on these little mini lessons on some of the biggest moves west that we have, and what inspired and what were the results of moving west. One of the biggest amount of lands required west was the Louisiana Purchase, which was purchased by French leader Napoleon, who had abandoned his dream by this point of the American Empire. By 1803, uh, the French leader Napoleon is broke and needs money quick. And he needed money to fight his European war, so he accepted Jefferson's offer of about $15 million for that whole green area you see in the middle. It more than doubled the size of the, current United, of the United States at the time. And afterwards, Thomas Jefferson sent Lewis and Clark on exploratory missions to see what the newly acquired land had uh, gained for the United States. Our second area of land that we see that comes into conflict is as we're going west. And as we're moving, we see this pink and this blue line, kind of this north versus south. Again, we have not fought the Civil War yet, but Missouri comes in as a state in 1820. And the issue of slave versus non-slave territories and states is raised. And this question is going to be raised later, so I just wanted to point it out that in Chapter 4, when we focus on the Civil War, what should happen and the question of what should happen with new territory, should it be slave, should it be free, who should decide is raised at this time. Another issue in pushing west is what to do with the Indians. Congress, with Jackson's support, had passed the Indian Removal Act of 1830, and under this law, the federal government had funded treaties that forced the tribes west. The Cherokee tribe in Georgia refused, and actually were supported by the Supreme Court, but Jackson refused to abide by the court decision. And Jackson said that John Marshall, who was the Supreme Court Chief Justice, had made his decision, now let him enforce it, meaning you get out there and do it. Afterwards, Jackson enforces what he will, and the Trail of Tears is followed um, as the court rules on the U.S. troops rounded up the Cherokee and drove them west, mostly on foot. Thousands of, are going to die through this process. In this map, you'll see where the Indians had actually been moved to, most of them on the East Coast now being relocated to the new Midwest. The interesting thing is, is when that land is required and they want that land as well, they will be forced even further west. Now you might be thinking after the Indian Removal Act and other forcible acts of moving Indians and other people out of their land, what gave the Americans the motivation to do this? The motivation is illustrated perfectly by this by this painting here, where we see an angel leading people west across the United States. And this belief, called Manifest Destiny, was the belief that not only was it obvious that they would move west, but it was destined, destined from the gods that they would get this land. So, whatever it took, whatever cost, it was supposed to happen this way, and therefore they would achieve all that they needed to to move west until they had the land from sea to shining sea. Once the land was acquired, a lot of people were asked, as well as offered, to move west with the hope of new land and adventure out on the new open trail. No highways existed at this time, so wagon trails served as the roads of the west, and some people had to actually carve their way through these, these mountains and these hills and these valleys to form our first trails. The Santa Fe Trail ran from Independence, Missouri to Santa Fe, New Mexico. The Oregon Trail stretched all the way from Independence to Oregon City, Oregon. And the Mormons especially utilized the Oregon Trail on their way to Salt Lake City, settling in the Salt Lake Valley. The last area we are going to focus on is the Texas Territory. Now, at this time, Mexico had controlled what is pretty much what we're in today, if you were in my class in Utah, in California, Nevada, Arizona, all the way into modern-day Texas. And after 300 years of Spanish rule, Mexican settlers felt pretty home at the Texas Territory. Uh, Mexico had won their independence from Spain in about 1821, and Texas was theirs, according to them. And Mexican officials offered land to Americans to make this area more stable. They needed help growing and cultivating the land. 
So soon afterwards, Americans soon outnumbered the Mexicans in the in the Texas area, and trouble started. At this time, American colonist Stephen Austin, which we will know for for Stephen, uh, sorry, Austin, Texas, established a colony of Americans in Texas. And the conflicts intensified between the Mexicans and the Americans at this time. And one issue that they had between each other was the issue of slavery, where Americans thought that that was okay to have, and they brought them. The Mexicans had outlawed slavery, however, in 1829, and did not appreciate slaves being brought into their territory. One of the most famous battles that comes out of this need to get the Texas territory is the Battle of the Alamo. Now, Mexican President Santa Ana was determined to force the Texans to obey Mexican law. Santa Ana marched his troops towards San Antonio, and at the same time, Austin was calling to arms all the American Texans. And American forces had moved into a mission known as the Alamo in 1836. And after 13 days, the Mexican troops had scaled the walls and slaughtered all 187 Americans. Two Americans were left living at this time. Now afterwards, going to the next succeeding battles, many people shouted, Remember the Alamo, to inspire them to keep going. And as a result, because of this war, although this battle, sorry, not although not a successful one in their eyes, it motivated them, motivated them to keep going to get the rest of the territory, because according to Manifest Destiny, it was theirs. In 1844, the presidential election winner, James Polk, eagerly wanted to annex Texas or make it a part of the United States. Negotiations had failed, and the U.S. troops moved into Mexican territory in 1845. An American victory soon followed. In 1848, Mexican leader Santa Ana conceded to victory and the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo was signed, and the U.S. got even larger with Texas, New Mexico, and California. And as you can see, Chapter 3 is all about expansion and moving west, not only with reestablishing our independence with the War of 1812 and figuring out what to do with the first political parties and judges and everyone's positions, but what do we do with this newly acquired land?